Today I'm taking a look at the Sky RC NT3000 Pro battery charger and analyzer. So this is specifically for AA, AAA batteries that are NIM or NICAD. So this is the box, got the specifications, takes a QC input and PD input, PD3. Can charge up to 3 amps, it can discharge at 2.5 amps. There is a Android and an iPhone app that you can use and there are more specifications in German. So inside the box, you get this quick start guide. It just goes through the basic functions. Yeah, let's take a look and see. That's the USB-C port. It's got USB-C PD 65 watt input. And there we have it. Let's check out the, the build quality. Got these really big rubber feet here, they're really solid, got some vents. There are some fans to blow the air through. So got fans there just pushing the air through with the vents. These are the positive and negative terminals. So they are specifically for button top AA and AAA cells. Each of these slots is individual or independent. So you can independently charge and discharge. You can see the bottom row is used for the AAA cells. So they just slot in here. And the top is the double A's. So that's how they click in. They've got a quite a nice creepy fit. So that's not moving anywhere. This is the scroll wheel. It's got a really nice mechanical feel to it. You can just click <laughs> and then I really like buttons. So <laughs> I'm not a big fan of touch screens. I really like these uh, physical buttons. It's really, really easy to control. You just press them Can turn them off quickly. It's just so much faster using physical buttons. That said, you can simply use the Sky Charger app to connect and can select, so let's say, charge it one amp start now both channels are charging at one amp you can stop that get more details so we can select each of these and view a real-time graph as the data is coming in it will start plotting the data on the graph so internal resistance yeah that's nice so that is the sky charger app so you can use that to remote control the user interface is quite simple. You've got this button to change between each of the slots. You can use the scroll wheel too to select one of the slots and press it down to select. So boom, select it. Get back to the home screen. If I press this scroll button down, it will enter the settings menu. So if I just hold it down and now it's gone to settings. So we can change the language. Select English, you can change the backlight to low, middle, high. I can put the beeper on if you like the beeping. I do not like beeping, so I'll turn that off. You can have a notification beep as well. A completion beep is on. If you want the user guide, <laughs> you can download a full user guide by following the QR code there. The quick start guide isn't the complete guide, but that user guide will be a PDF that has the full information. Got basic information about the hardware and the firmware. And yeah, some more info here. Can factory reset. Let's go back. To configure a channel, we just click the scroll button, click again, and now we can select the mode. We click to select a mode, and we've got six different modes. We've got charge, discharge, break-in, cycle, max boost, and turbo. So let's go through each of these. If we click charge, we can select the capacity. I'm gonna take, say, like an inner loop cell of like 2450 for the capacity. I can just select, say, maybe 2600. Charge current side 2.2, so it goes down to 2.2 and it goes up to, I think, three amps. I'm gonna select about two amps. So you can read the full user manual for recommended charging currents and discharge current rates. Target voltage, 1.65, cutoff timer, so we can Change the cutoff timer. Got the restart delta V. So that is 
six millivolts. So you can put that at like five, or you can go all the way down to one, or up to 20. So let's select five. You get a trickle charge of 100 milliamps. You can change that down to off, up in 10 milliamp increments. So let's change it back to 100. <laughs> it's current mode fixed, or we could use the internal resistance and let it try to calculate what it should be using based on the IR. So let's pop a cell in. I've applied it to all channels and yeah, now it's on all channels. We pop some more cells in. We'll start charging. So now I've got four cells in and they're all charging at about two amps each. On the screen we can see the capacity so far. There's the internal resistance of 20 milliohm Delta V hasn't been detected and it's got the time that's just cycling through. So you can use the Sky RC charger app and I've got two chargers here, the MC5000 and NC3000 Pro. Let's hook up this one. So while that's charging, let's check out the Sky RC charger app. It's got the mode, status, capacity. It's basically everything you could see on the charger. We can stop that particular channel. Sure, let's stop it. Okay. Now we can change the settings, change the mode. Could override all the channels by just applying here. Start, and now it's updating all the channels. So now it's just one amp charging instead. You can update the firmware, so if you're not charging this, Let's take the batteries out and we can look at updating the firmware. If we take this out, it should throw a warning. So it said it was, yeah, it's ended a bit too early. So we'll just take these out. It doesn't expect it. So connection break warning. So we can't see a Bluetooth icon there. I disconnect the app. Let's go back into. Cool. Connection break. Can check the firmware version. It's currently up to date. So the firmware is good. We can set up a password if we like. So that is the app. Let's continue with the modes. Oh, you'll notice that you can't actually use the scroll wheel. It says the USB is connected. It's like so I can't set that while the app is connected. Let's disconnect the app. Now it's disconnected with that red symbol and I can go in and change the mode. So let's change the mode. 
go to discharge. You can set a discharge current. You can go all the way down to 0.2 and up to 2.5 in 0.1 increments. You can set the cutoff voltage. This goes down to 0.5 volts up to 1.1. So I'd select 0.5. Pop a cell in and apply to all channels. Yes. Now it is discharging. If I pop multiple cells in I'll just pop in quite simply I think the fan should start because they're all going to be charging or discharging at a rate of 2.5 amps so it will I think it will want the fans on to reduce the temperature So I can stop working by clicking the scroll button, cycle, stop, cycle, stop. And let's select another mode. So this is the break-in mode. Let's do 2.5. So it's calculating it based on the capacity for break-in. Let's say we've got a small cell, maybe 900 milliamp hours for an N-loop <laughs> triple-A cell. You can go even lower to like 700. All the way down. Ooh, we could turn that off. Got a charge and discharge of 0.2 amps. I'm just going to set that to 26. Cool. So that will charge, discharge, charge. And you can change the mode to discharge, charge, <laughs> discharge. So if I ran that on the cells, it would take ages. Oh, we're talking like 16 plus hours. But yeah, this is good if you've got a whole bunch of cells that need to be, I guess, waken up a bit. If you haven't used, used them for say over three months or longer, maybe a year or two, you might want to use break-in mode. Let's switch this off. The next mode is cycle. You might want to cycle these and just figure out what the capacity is if you're trying to match them. So you can set the charge current, discharge current. Maybe three amps is a bit high. Um, <laughs> a charge of one discharge, maybe one or 0.5, can go one. Target 1.6, one. So you can set the resting time after charge and discharge. Delta V can be set, cycle CD or DC. And cycle count is one, two, or three cycles. So it's limited to three maximum. Current mode fixed, or you can use the internal resistance. So let's start that. You should be able to scroll down and see each of the capacities and for the discharge and charge cycles. So you can use the scroll wheel for each of these. 
slots to check out charge one, discharge one, charge two, discharge two, charge three, discharge three, and so on. And yeah, that will take quite a while as well to go through the process. The next mode is max boost. So you can set your capacity, your desired discharge capacity, the current, the charge current, and the discharge current, target voltage, rest after charge, delta V for termination, and then you can also use that internal resistance for determining current. So let's start. That's max boost, it will charge and then discharge by a certain amount. And last but not least is turbo. So if you want to charge your cell at 3 amps, you can use this mode. Otherwise you can select the IR auto and it will try to limit the current. So let's apply it to all of them. And yeah, we're getting 2.95, 2.98, 3, 2.99. Let's see, how does that compare to say an ISDT C4 Evo or the XTA L4 Pro? So you can see it's quite chunky. So those fans do take up a lot of space. Although this has one, it's got one little fan there and USB-C input. This one's definitely chunky and it's a big one out of the lot. If you're looking for a AAA, AA NIM NICAD battery charger analyzer, yeah, I can highly recommend this SkyRC NC3000 Pro. I really like that it's got USB-C, it's got fans to keep things cool. It's really easy and fast to use this interface with the mechanical buttons. It's just yeah, a really nice build quality too, overall. It's lightweight, but it's pretty big. i um, not gonna lie, that's really, really chunky, but it's packed with features. There's like six different modes, it's, and you can update the firmware as Sky RC keep making changes and yeah, improving it overall. If you want more details or if you want to see more test results, check out my blog in the description below. I've got a link to all the tests that I've performed and you can see, yeah, what it's actually doing under the hood all in terms of like the charging current, the voltage, temperature. It's, yeah, pretty cool.